Before I start on my topic, I would like each of you to think of a woman in your life, whether it be your mother, a sister, a grandmother, somebody who's important to you, who you look up to. It can even be yourself. And as I talk about the issues, I want you to think if she was in that position and what would you do? Sorry, okay. I wanna start with a personal anecdote. This past spring break, I had the privilege with my family of volunteering in Ethiopia. The southern region of Ethiopia in the Yedabon, there's a project called Project Mercy. It has a school, a hospital, a cattle farm, a farm, and it just contributes to the community around it. While there, they invited me down to their hospital to watch a surgery, since I'm very interested in the medical field. I said yes, and was not prepped beforehand on what this surgery entailed. I scrubbed up, I went in, and the first thing I noticed is that they're taking out the woman's uterus. I'm thinking, what's going on? What is this about? And at the end of the surgery, they sew up her vagina. I'm of course like, why is this surgery happening? What's going on? And one of the nurses says she had a fistula. For those of you who don't know what a fistula is, a fistula is when a woman has many children or has a very difficult pregnancy. The baby presses against the soft tissue between the woman's urinary tract, rectum, and vagina. When this tissue dies, there's nothing there, and the woman leaks urine, blood, and feces. In many cases, she is sent out of her village, her home, the life she knows. And this can occur in girls as young as 13, girls who won't have an education, won't have any way to support themselves. In this case, the one, girl has probably been forced into a child marriage and is having a child way too early for her own good. When I left Ethiopia, I was intrigued by female health and how it influences the female education. It caused me to pursue looking into this issue. And I came across a very applicable female health issue that affects almost every single woman in our world. And that is menstruation, or better known as the period. Now, there are about 1.8 billion girls right now at reproductive age. About one in 10 girls in Africa will miss school because of her period. And that's of the girls who are able to go to school. There's an estimated 15 million who will never step foot in a school. Out of those, about 500 million girls of reproductive age will never have facilities during her period and 100 million of them will not have access to female hygiene products. In Ethiopia, where I was, 56% of girls do not have access to female hygiene products. In India, 23% of girls will drop out of school because of her period. This is a problem, especially in rural Nepal, where a girl, when she's on her period, is sent to live in a shed for the duration of the period, which women can have a period once every month for about three to five days. And this practice has caused many, many deaths. But how does this relate to the female education? Well, in a study by World Bank, girls said that when they had female hygiene products, 98% of them focused more in school, were able to focus more on their schoolwork, on what they were learning, on getting an education, than on being scared that they were gonna have blood showing. But it's not just the lack of female hygiene products that is aiding to this issue, it's also the stigma attached. Such as when a girl does not have female hygiene products and she is bleeding in school, there was a recorded incident of a 14-year-old girl in Kenya in the book called Shattering the Taboo of Menstruation, It's Only Blood. She said that when she was at school, she went to school and she started bleeding and it showed and kids around her started to make fun of her. But it was not their fault for making fun of her. It was her fault, even though she could not afford female hygiene products. It was her fault for trying to pursue an education. And so, so many girls are getting held back from obtaining an education because of this. Now, there is stuff being done to help this issue, such as in a Netflix documentary that came out just this past year and won an Academy Award called Period End of Sentence, there was a school in Oakland, California, who raised enough money to send pad making machines to a rural village in India called Hapur, India. Now they employed women in the village to make the pads, then the pads were sent out among the village so that girls had accessible female hygiene products, and they were also affordable for the women. 
Now, this is in a village where when boys were interviewed and asked what menstruation was, the boys responded, oh, it's a disease that affects women. That is how low the education on this issue is. Unfortunately, this is not only a problem that we see in rural areas or third world countries. This is also a problem we deal with in countries such as the US and the UK. Let me start with the US. In the USA, one in five girls will miss school because of her period. A lot of this is largely due to the pink tax, as it is nicknamed. It is the fact that female hygiene products within the United States and many states are taxed as luxury products. What does that mean? Well, let's take Tennessee, my home state. There is a 7% sales tax on products. But on female hygiene products, there is a 9% sales tax. And in the state of Tennessee and in many other states, bandages and gauze are not taxed at all because they stop the flow of blood. Which is ironic seeing as I'm pretty sure the reason most women are buying female hygiene products is to stop the flow of blood. But the thing is, is we should be providing these menstruation products for girls in school so that they can pursue an education. Right now, there are 15 states that don't have a pink tax. Five, because they have no sales tax at all, and nine, because they eradicated this sales ta the pink tax. But only three states, and actually just this past week, Nashville passed a bill, or Tennessee passed a bill, that says that every single public school needs to have female hygiene products available to girls. The other states are New York, California, and Illinois. I don't know if the girls here knew that they were so lucky that they could go to the nurse's office and get female hygiene products when they needed it. That if they started their period in the middle of class, they didn't have to go home and sacrifice their education because of a life-sustaining process that almost all women have. Let's take the UK. In the UK, 137,000 girls will miss school every year because of her period. In the UK, they interviewed parents of girls some of them saying they would steal female hygiene products when they couldn't afford them because they wanted their girls to get an education. And some who didn't steal the products would instead give up things like food or other necessities within their life so that they could send their girl to school so that she could feel comfortable getting an education. Now within the UK, there is one country, and it is the only country, to say that every single school, university, and college has to have accessible female hygiene products for girls, and that's Scotland. Now, why is it so important that females get an education? Why does this problem matter in our world? Well, for starters, when a female gets an education, she is less likely to be in a child marriage. I brought up fistulas at the part of this speech what inspired me to pursue this issue. Now, when a girl is in, not in a child marriage, she will be less likely to have kids early, less likely to have a fistula early, and her parents will be more likely to send her to school because they know she will be able to make money and support a family. She will also have children later and have less children, which, but aiding to the population growth because they will be healthier. She will also have a higher standard of living because she will be able to make money and contribute to her family. She's, in most cases, less likely to have, uh, be a victim of sexual violence. All of these aiding to the female's life when she gets an education. But countries are going to say, why should we spend the money, the extra money, to provide a public education to all females? Well, in a study done by World Bank, countries are losing 15 to 30 trillion dollars right now because they are not educating their women. 130 million girls between the ages of six and 17 are not in school right now. And not only that, but for every 1% of girls educated, the GDP of a country goes up by 0.3%. When I first heard this statistic, I thought 1%, 0.3%, not the highest percentage, probably doesn't matter. But when you think that there are 3.7 billion girls in our world right now, that small number grows exponentially. But what can we do about the problem? How can we fix this problem? 
Well, for starters, I'm pretty sure most of the women in this world have to buy period products. Did you know there's brands such as Always, Hey Girl, Anti-Flow, and Lola that whenever you buy female hygiene products, they donate to areas of low socioeconomic or to countries where girls do not have access to these kinds of products? Or the fact that I was midway through writing a letter to my governor when I found out that Tennessee had passed the bill that required that all schools have female hygiene products. So why not do that? Why not write to the people who are supposed to represent you, who are supposed to reflect you in the way that they make decisions? We can all make changes in our world if we try. But how about erasing the stigma? Something we can do in our everyday lives. Periods aren't something we talk about. They're not something that we bring up in a discussion. Some people might think, why am I talking about it now? But it's important. It's important that we erase the stigma that surrounds it. Not only in third world countries where girls are made fun of it for it, but also in our own schools, in our own lives. This, um, the title of our TEDx is The Power of Youth. But isn't the most powerful thing we can give to our female youth in education? An education that they can take with them and change the world? I think so. Thank you. Thank you.